Hey guys, this episode of Nerds and Suits content is brought to you by the Popcorn Talk Network, an affiliate network of AfterBuzz TV launched by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. Popcorn Talk really taught me everything I knew when I got started as a host. I started doing Action Movie Anatomy there five years ago with Andrew Guy, and we've been doing it ever since, obviously leading up until the crazy crisis that we're in. This interview you're about to watch is actually something that was taped a long time ago in conjunction with them, intended to be launched as a Popcorn Talk affiliate interview. Things kind of changed, and you guys will hear the full story, but I just needed to take a quick second to give a big-time thank you to them, to Stephen Lemieux, the executive producer, for being behind it, and to the entire staff and studio for providing the resources to make this happen. Um, I would never be where I am in my career today without them, and if you guys haven't checked out Popcorn Talk, go and check out their stuff right now, everywhere you can find podcasts, and of course, on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening, and enjoy the show. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of A Great Conversation here on Nerds and Suits. My name is Ben Bateman, and today I'm going to be talking to Anthony Timbakis, writer of my favorite film of all time, Warrior, which is exciting, and an interview you guys probably expected you would have heard about by now. More on that in a quick second. But right now, I want to give a big thank you to all of my certified NIS Infinity members of the Patreon. Brand new patrons this last weekend when I launched the Patreon. A huge thank you to all you guys for helping me launch this thing. John Patterson, CJ Robinson, Nicole Krafik, Lucas Shashek, Charlotte Gherkin, and Jake Yakavetta. Thank you to every single patron. The vast majority of you so far will see your name somewhere in this video. And just a big time thanks to those Infinity members who launched the thing. Go to patreon.com slash nerds and suits if you guys want to see all the different levels and rewards that are going on. So back in 2017, I recorded this interview with Anthony. Anthony's a friend of mine. He has been for years. And some of you guys probably remember seeing Anthony on an episode of Action Movie Anatomy. He and Gavin O'Connor came on together. So a little while after that, probably about a year later, I brought Anthony over to do an interview at Popcorn Talk because I was planning at that point on launching a network with Popcorn Talk called Nerds and Suits, incidentally. The logo you guys have all seen that Jacob Patrick was so incredible to rework was actually originally designed by Stephen Lemieux, the executive producer, and actually concepted by Roxy Stryer with me in a discussion we had. So the Nerds and Suits thing dates way back. But this interview was taped as a pilot episode of a show called The Closet Nerd, and the idea was to take very successful Hollywood professionals and interview them about the things they nerd out about. And in, in this conversation with Anthony, we talk about all kinds of cool stuff. I get to hear his story of kind of how he left his career as a professor uh, to go and get into screenwriting, actually writing Warrior, meeting the band, The National, all these cool things. We talk about sports. There's some eerie stuff in here. We have a big conversation about Kobe Bryant, which listening back is kind of strange, but... Um, I filmed pilots to a few different episodes, and with Nerds and Suits, with Popcorn Talk and, and After Buzz, kind of time passed, things changed, we never ended up quite launching it the way we wanted to, and at a certain point, we all got busy, and I had to go start traveling the world for toy sales and all kinds of other things. It was only kind of more recently that I was able to think about relaunching the brand Nerds and Suits the way that I had wanted to and doing it on my own. But this interview, along with one or two others, kind of existed, and you'll hear in this interview we talk about a lot of other things that I was planning on launching at the same time other shows with Andrew, other concepts, uh, very, very fun stuff. And so it's kind of a trip to go back and listen to this. Um, I was skinnier, a little more skittish in the way that I was interviewing people. And also it's an in-person interview, which is kind of strange. Um, there's so much stuff now during COVID that is done all via streaming. Watching this back just reminds me of how different it is to actually interview somebody when you're sitting there in person with them. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I, I had a blast watching it back, to be honest with you. And uh, what a cool guy. What a, what a generous guy with his time Anthony was, because obviously he actually wrote my favorite movie of all time. So a big thanks to all you guys that helped me launch this network, that helped me launch the Patreon this last weekend. I will be doing my very first episode of the Studio Diary Show, which is my twice a month, one hour stream, where I'm actually working on my original album I announced this last weekend and, and actually songwriting in a session, in a private session. You guys can kind of hear, you can, you know, a lot of you guys that are Double Diamond members have covers you've suggested. I'll probably play some of those. And I'm doing the very first one of those coming up this Saturday at 3.30 p.m. from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You guys will get a private link here on Patreon if you're members already. So go check that out. That's available to everybody at the Diamond level and above. Um, but thank you to all you guys for helping launch that and get excited about the very first uh, you know studio diary and enjoy this interview with Anthony because what a cool one this was remember to leave a comment subscribe and of course hit that like button remember guys comments are everything they literally mean everything to the algorithm you guys have been so cool about that leaving your comments so even if you're watching this as an unlisted link as an early patron or you're watching the live premiere with the live chat please remember to go leave a comment below when the video is done thanks for watching guys enjoy and I'll be back next week the full schedule of brand new stuff from nerds and suits bye guys 
What's going on guys? Welcome to the very first episode ever on Nerds and Suits of the Closet Nerd where I talk to the most successful folks in Hollywood about the thing they nerd out about when they're off the clock. Or sometimes the thing is they nerd about when they're on the clock. I'm hanging out with Anthony Tambakis, legendary writer in Hollywood and the writer of one of my five favorite films of all time, Warrior. Hang out with me guys. We'll see you on Closet Nerd in just one second. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Closet Nerd on Nerds and Suits. What's up, man? How you hey, doing? Man, how are you, man? I'm very well, AT. I got Anthony Tabakis in the guest seat over here. How you doing? Yeah, I'm great. Dude. We're listening to About Today, the live version. Yes, indeed. By the Beautiful band. to see. See the boys doing their thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh -huh. the band The National. This is the song that we actually met, uh, basically, talking about this band. That's exactly how we met. Yeah, it's a good story. You want me to we'll... tell that story? You want me to tell the story? We can get to it later on the okay, show. Okay, we'll do it later. So guys, welcome to The Closet Nerd. This is the show where I talk to the most successful folks in Hollywood about the things they nerd out about when they're not doing their job. Uh, you know, just the, the songs, the sports, the, the crocheting maybe. I don't know. Uh, the, the things that they love. That's, that's not what's going to happen here. Okay. I mean, it might happen in a later episode. For you. Yeah. I don't know who you got on your list, when we but bring that's not happening here. When we bring you back for your return visit. Yeah, I'll bring you a, a sweater. I'll bring you a nice cardigan. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, guys, just in case you're wondering, the song you're listening to is About Today, the live version of the band, The National. This appears uh, in the end. It, it appears really in the last seven minutes of the film Warrior, which is uh, is written by Anthony because you're a writer. That's what I you am do. a writer, and I did write that movie, yeah. Yeah, you've written a whole bunch of stuff. That's, I would say, the piece that people know you the most from is the film Warrior, though. I know you're supposed to start like this, and it's your first show. Yeah. And you want to get off to a smooth start. Yeah. But I'm really fixated on finishing the argument we were okay, having right, right before we went on the air. <laughs> ben Bateman claims, by the way, he's not wrong. We should contextualize this by saying he's okay. working on a manifesto. Yeah, it's incredible. A lot of good rules in there. He's working on a fist pump film school manifesto. Yeah, that so is? the deal is, nerds and suits here, guys. This network, we we do deep dives on things. There's a show on this network called Fist Pump Films Weekly that's launching. It's <laughs> a great name. And uh, we have a we had a like a manifesto because I did a show called Action Movie Anatomy for a couple years where I went to uh, Fist Pump Film School with Andrew Guy, my co-host, another friend of ours. Andrew's great. Yeah, and we wrote a hundred rules in this rule book, this leather bound book. And one of the rules is the drug deal gone bad scene in Boogie Nights is the greatest use ever of music in a film. If you don't know what that is, I'm not even going to bother explaining the scene. That's actually just... a disgrace, and yeah. I don't think you need these people. <laughs> I know you need viewers and everything, but I don't. you don't need people like that. If you haven't seen the... Just pause the, it. It's the scene. If you haven't seen the Alfred Molina yeah. drug scene in Boogie Nights, you should, like, why do you... Do you even like the movies? What's happening? So you want to respond about this? I would just like to say your your claim that it is unequivocally the greatest use of music. Yeah, it's an Andrew Guy thesis, by the way. That's That comes directly from him. I just agree with him. It's an absolutely perfect example of how to use pop music in a film and in a scene it's it's exceptional i'm gonna say it's you're wrong however it's not the greatest one of all time because okay. it cheats a little bit because it allows the actors to interact with the songs when you let your actors interact ah. with the music now it takes on uh performance yeah and so it no longer counts as just simply using music because right. it's interacting with performance the greatest use of music in the history of American cinema. Yeah. Is the Layla death montage in Goodfellas when he plays the coda of Clapton's yeah. Layla and and all the bodies are exposed. Washing up. That is the most beautiful, uh, elegant uh, use of pop music and imagery ever in a in a in a film. It's a pretty phenomenal scene. It's a but Boogie Nights scene might be here. You put this in your manifesto. Is that the most fun scene of all time? Maybe, and I also think the one thing that we're... Because you said it's not fair because the actors interact with it. Well, sure. the music is a character in the scene, and that's that's why it's different than what you're talking about. I, I, there are a hundred other things on your list that you already read me that are <laughs> way flimsier than that. I picked yeah. the, I picked a, a weak hill to make a stand on here. It's but, a good but some list. of those other ones are they're just ridiculous. It's, we're gonna including, have... by the way, all female action stars peak over the age of... 29? What? Yeah. It's a, it's a loose rule. We haven't written that one in the book. Very yet. Loose. The ink is not dry on that one. Very I mean, loose. Like we, yeah. we're, I think when we do the Boogie Nights, that Because Lucy thesis, made like well over $100 million. Yeah, we're, we're going to do the thesis on that episode probably, the Boogie Nights music one, and you'll have to be our guest for that. I'd be delighted to talk about Boogie Nights. Yeah, it seems anyway, like sorry it. to hijack your beginning, but hey, I, I had to get to the bottom of that. That's what know? we do. You nerd out about that, man. Yeah, I do nerd Me out too. about that a little Me bit. Me too. So guys, uh, yeah, welcome welcome to the show, The Closet Nerd. Uh, what we do on Nerds and Suits is we take just the everything in the world that you love and we just go the deepest dive on it possible. So we're going to go deep dive on Anthony Tabacchus right now. And what I want to know, Anthony, is 
everybody knows who you are. You're fielding offers from the studios for the biggest projects. You have like nine things in the works. You're working with my favorite actors in the world. You, you'll, you'll, I'll give you, should I give you cash after this? Yeah. Or just a, <laughs> are you, are you still taking checks? Well, this is it's what very I want generous, to know. But you're, you're, my fifth yeah. favorite movie ever made is written by you. And I, this was my favorite movie ever before we met, by the way. It should be noted, however, that it stands four slots below Point Break. Yeah. So well, let's just, if you guys let's, know let's, anything let's about me, then you know what, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's important to me. I mean, yeah, it's, it's very touching that <laughs> it is ba- number five, it's but it's four slots below a Keanu Reeves movie, which featured a, a, peroxide, a peroxidized hair. Uh, what? Uh, oh, Swayze? Yeah, the Swayze's hair? hair was its own character. Don't you really, speak about Swayze's movie. mane. Don't I'm not, you do I'm it. not going off. I'm just saying that. That's number one on your list. So it's like a backhanded. Take... It's like a backhanded compliment. Yeah, everything, everything yeah. comes with a grain of salt in this room. I get it. So what I want to know is, you came from the East Coast, yeah. uh, and I've known you for a couple of years now. I've never actually gotten to hear the story of how did you get to this position to write this movie and to have all these incredible projects going on. What What was the story? What were the steps? I don't think it's uh, frankly that dissimilar to uh, a lot of people's, um, you know, Hollywood narratives, except for like the what, what gets people to come out here. I mean, for me personally, I was a I had a whole other life. I mean, I. I was living in Atlanta. I was a college professor and a short story writer. Okay. So and none of this was, I didn't know anybody who lived in LA or- What school did you teach at? Uh, Georgia State in Atlanta. Oh, cool. So that was my life. You know, I was a young professor and- Yeah. You know, and- uh, Did you go to Georgia State? Yeah, I went to grad school there. Okay. Um, I went to undergrad at UMass, but um, that was my life there. And then I was- there's always a girl involved, sure. as you know. You know, most yeah. people like anybody who ends up in Hollywood ends up here for two reasons: either there was a girl involved, or they just want to be. You know, they're just they want to be somebody driven by a kind of relentless sure, yeah. ambition. But for me, I was engaged in Atlanta and I was living a normal wow. life, and it just like had, I had a you know a catastrophic, spectacular breakup. Oh man! And um, you know, I always loved the movies, and I just wanted to want a new chapter in my life so like a lot of people frankly i just like i packed what i had left just left all my stuff there like just packed my truck and drove out here and you just came out here yeah i only knew one i knew one person a painter who lived uh an artist uh, who lived in west hollywood let, let it be noted guys can you how old were you when this happened i was uh 30 37 to anybody in the I'm gonna curse now because it's just too. I feel so much right now. To anybody you in the fucking to curse world, on this show? yes. Oh, now you didn't tell me that. It's my show. That's fucking awesome. All right, let's fucking curse. I I worked in the service industry for a long time. I met you as a bartender yeah. at a restaurant a few years back, um, which I no longer have to do, which is great. Yeah, but, I'm proud of you. You've yeah. done great. You've, been, you've come a long way. It's happy. To, it makes me happy. All of the people in the service industry that I worked with, you know, they, they say don't get into that. They don't say don't be a bartender, don't be a server because the money's good. You get comfortable, and then your your life passes you by. To anybody who's like looking at themselves in the mirror, they're 36, they're 37, they've been waiting tables for. 15 years you left Atlanta knowing one person yeah and you drove out here and yeah. here we are yeah. I think that is so unbelievable like that's like that's like inspiration you should be you should be Tony Robbins you should be giving like motivational speeches to people so how did it happen you one person did you see that doc on Tony Robbins on Netflix I haven't seen it yet very no. interesting you should watch it yeah um, he's an interesting character um well I mean you know I had a little bit of an advantage because you know I knew I had a another career so i you know i knew sure i knew narrative storytelling you know i knew how to i knew i didn't know how to screenwrite though i never wrote a screenplay in my life at that until point, 37 you never wrote a screenplay no what i did was uh before i left yeah. there was a uh, at the time i don't know if it's still around but there's a, a thing online called uh, a, a script warehouse i think it was called drew's scriptorama oh. it had just some tragic like early <laughs> internet font you know it's probably still up i, sure, I imagine yeah. but anyways drew's scriptorama has uh scripts well, so every movie script you oh, can you never, go buy that you could ever think of. Before everything was PDFs. For free. Yeah. They're just on, less, a lot of them are shooting scripts. Uh, sure. Some of them are uh, drafts or whatever. But I basically, I did what you were doing. Ben's been making a list of his yeah. said, favorite 50 <laughs> movies of all time. So I, I made a list of, of 75 right. of my favorite movies of, of all time. And I downloaded all those scripts. And part of what was in the truck were three uh, cardboard boxes filled with scripts. And I would watch movie, read the script, and look at it back and forth, and t- to try to understand how, how happen, the page yeah. transfers to and doesn't also, sure. you know, because uh, what I was good at, I was a fiction writer, so I knew about uh, I wrote about people's interior lives, but sure. uh, 
film is a visual form and it's all about exterior lives. Yeah. So I can't, I don't have the liberty. If I wrote a story about you, I can get into Ben Bateman's head and write about your point of view and everything you're thinking right now. Right. But that's not available to me with film. You're on camera. Yeah. So it's a different form sure. of storytelling. But I thought it was, honestly, if you can do the other, if you can write a book, yeah, like scripts or not. Had I mean, you written a book at that point? I was in the middle of writing one, which I finished finally. Yeah. Uh, it comes out in July. But um, What's it called? It's called Swimming with Bridgeport Girls. It only nice. took me 14 years of my life. It's um, exciting. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, it was what I wanted to do growing up, was to be, a, you know, to have, like, a, a book. book on the shelf with J.D. Yeah. Salinger and Scott Fitzgerald. So that's what. And that's in 14 what, years it took you, books died. <laughs> just kidding just kidding no it's a fact <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah. uh yeah it's not been fun for me to watch the english language systematically uh, destroyed in my own lifetime but at Twitter least and other ways. at least like the kindle and these things came along to in some ways just save the fire from completely because yeah. people people do i know people that read people books. still read you know it's unfortunate it's lost its cultural relevance and you know been replaced by movies and mm -hmm. television now more so than ever yeah that is interesting the narrative the, the long form tv but stuff. i did at least know how to how to I knew what I was doing, right. and I had talent. But the hardest thing for and I, most people who moved out here can probably relate to this. Um, it's just like uh, going to a new high school, right? You know, it's very cl it's clubby and clicky, and there's rules that are completely inscrutable, which yeah. you know, like yeah, there are yeah, rules yeah. in in the uh, in Hollywood, which wouldn't work in any other industry. Yeah, it's true. It would it's it would be impossible. You couldn't run a, a regular business like this place is run. So. I had a little bit of an advantage in that at least I was older yeah. and was uh, and good at what I did. So not, then it was not trying to be an actor. Figure out the rules. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> just try, yeah. Figure out the rules of, yeah. and how you get in. Sure. And then uh, that was the hardest part for me. And then once I figured out, it's like you know, it's like it's, again, make a school analogy. It's like uh, how do you get invited to the cool party? Yeah. Right. But once you get invited to the cool party, everybody sees you there. Yeah. And they're like, oh, Ben's here. He must be cool. Yeah. So they'll invite you to the next party. Yeah. And hence you're in. Right. In a town where you're the in or you're out, that's how you get in. Really, you just get in by yeah. a fluke. Or like you stumble in one day, and then people think you belong there. And if you do good work and you're you gotta well act like, regarded. You have to act like you belong. That's the, that's the thing. It's the whole trick of it. Yeah. People always say all, all of life is about confidence. Do you or don't you have it? Do you walk in the room like you belong in the room or not? And that can be, that can be like, you can use that for like dating advice. You can use that for like sales advice. You can use that for just about anything. And it's the same thing. No question. Every decent, like all uh, books about, uh, you know, succeeding in business or turning your life around or any, any kind of self-help stuff. It's almost always that's a factor in it, which is like presenting an image of, yeah. you know, of authority and confidence. Because that's what people want, especially in a town like this. And particularly for what I do. Yeah. No one, there's an old saying William Goldman said, which has been repeated a million times, in Hollywood no one knows anything, right? right. So no one knows anything. And what that means is, in other fields you know a product that sure. you can make, which will probably be a successful product. Right. That doesn't exist here. Yeah, Except yeah. with like sequel mania, but that's that's not the same thing. But like original content, no one knows what's gonna work. Yeah. No one knows what movie's gonna work. Like, I've met people now, five, six years later, they think Warrior won a bunch of Academy Awards and was a yeah. blockbuster movie. It made five, <laughs> like point two million million on its opening weekend. Yeah. Like, it was a flop, frankly. Like, no one saw it, because uh, it's badly marketed. But no one remembers that. I mean, it's, you know. you're absolutely right. I think uh, recently on Shawshank Action too, Movie, by the way, Shawshank, yeah. Well, but I will say Shawshank got a Best Picture nomination, so that's the one difference. It lost in the crazy '94 year where Pulp Fiction, Forrest Gump, and Shawshank was that all for, that was Forrest Gump here all had the same Best Picture year of five nominees. Back when they only had five, three of the five were like in the top 30 movies ever. That's like one of the craziest things I know, there happened. used to be years like that. Now it's like, remember 96, even two years later, there was uh, English Patient. English Patient, Jerry Maguire. Shine, I think. Shine, year, right? uh, Sling Blade was that yeah, year. Sling like Blade. good movies, you know, yeah. like really good movies, but they don't make movies like that anymore. Yeah. But now they're TV shows. Yes. So I guess we should jump to it because you're talking about this and, and the sort of recognition, this this reminds me of The National a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that people just now think that The National, the early years, it's like, or that they it's like that now the regard for that band is that they're like one of the modern classic sort of indie bands. Yeah, Matt and those guys used to play in Brooklyn in front of six people. Yeah. All successful. Like, that's the story. I mean, you do your, like, you toil in the shadows. You know, yeah. that's where all your work is done. That's where you learn your craft. That's where you get your 10,000 hours of practice study that can let you be a, a, truly be a master of something or at least begin to yeah. have this tool set to be a master of something. You know, 10,000 hours. But like, so all that work is done 
no one knows who you are and you're just like in a room alone or you're in a bar playing in front of three people you know you just play music like yeah. if you're an artist you have to like yeah you got to be willing to you got to be willing to crash you just gotta love what you do and you got to grind it out everybody's an overnight success right? yeah who's worked forever they're an overnight success well that, what's the yeah. hollywood term took it, it takes you ten seven years to be an overnight sensation here yeah exactly that's, that's about say. right yeah. yeah so it's like it's a weird town like that so you but i got fortunate you know i had a you know, I had a good friend named Brian Callen, who was a comedian yeah. that I met out here. And I Brian, love Brian. Brian's the best. Like, I knew Brian before I knew you, which is so odd that he's now, and I, I know him now through you a little bit also. Yeah, he used to be, you know, he doesn't live there anymore, but, uh, you know, Brian used to live in Venice and uh, yeah. was kind of the mayor of Venice for a while. All the people, half the friends I met in, in uh, California met were at, uh, Brian used to have uh, Sundays to play beach volleyball and play running charades at Brian's house yeah. with actors and everything. And I was just yeah. like, this is great. You know, the girls out here are so amazing and they're yeah. so interesting until you, you know, date, yeah, right. th date them. Yeah. Uh, but at first, you know, they're so electric and like actresses are like, oh my God, they're just, they're beautiful and they're vivacious. Yeah. And you're like, I want that. And, um, yeah. and yeah, right. that, that, rabbit, that rabbit hole goes where it goes. But um, yeah, we met everybody there, but he introduced me to Gavin O'Connor. So that's how, you know, Gavin, uh, Asked me to write Warrior with him, and that's how it all started. And that was really that was the end of it. Before, for me, the beginning and the end. It was easy after that. I had a moment a few years back. I remember uh, not a few years, but yeah, probably a year and a half ago. I was at a party, one of these parties, like you're talking about. And I remember I was in a tux, and I was sort of, sort of like looking around. And I had the moment where I was like, "It's a beautiful house, celebrities everywhere. How like how did I get to this party? Like no one knows who I am still. I'm like, you know, yeah, but you look like you belong there. You yeah. look like an like you're tall, square jawed. You dress well. Like people, you, if you're at a place, people think you belong. It was a moment. It was yeah. a moment. I had you and Gav on the show talking Warrior on Action Movie Anatomy. That was another one of those moments when Gav wanted to watch the last scene. Yeah, he'd never all, seen it. We'd all watch it together. There's a couple of those moments where you sort of have the out of body experience for a second, the helicopter view. You're yeah, like, wow, of like it's actually I'm in the middle of it happening and I don't even realize it. What's that moment for you? Do you have one that you remember in those early days? Um. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You don't think about it anymore. Oh, never mind. We'll go back to tell, to tell the story we met because it's a good story. Um, what was... Yeah, I don't have them anymore. I, you forget. It's like anything else. You have enough yeah. experience. Where it's like, now it's like you can be with someone who's like supposed to be a megastar. You can be yeah. like, just shut, will you shut the fuck up for a second? Yeah, like, right. I'm trying to talk. Like, it's not a thing. Yeah, right. But for you're, me, you're musicians. Yeah, because your music, you just nerd out about music. Hard. I nerd about music. So, like, for me, actors. Yeah. Although, I will say, when I when I first came out here, I, I was I did have one moment like that. Yeah. I just got here, and I knew, like, I knew that one guy. But he knew a guy who was, like, some uh, uh, writer manager. Yeah. And I, w I got a job as his assistant. Okay. And he wouldn't even read my work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no interest <laughs> in me. You know, now, like, all these years later, he'll call me, hey, man, what's up? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I was sitting in a manager's office answering phones for, yeah. like, 10 months, and he would never read any of my work. That's you know, fantastic. Like, yeah. um, but we went to Chateau Marmont, okay, which yeah. is, like, how Holly Hollywood. And by the way, I, I, I love that place. Yeah. Like, I think... Uh, it's a cool place, architecturally. I mean, it's, it's a great. wank job, in, you know, with the people. But I got to hang out there at cool a premiere place. with Grillo and Callan for Kingdom, like, six months ago. It's great a fun, premiere. Great, great, great environment. It's a fun hang. I got yeah. drunk with Courtney Love recently at the... At Chateau? At Chateau. That is how you use the Chateau. Story like, for another time, I'm It sure. is, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's one of those Hollywoody places, but I wasn't... I didn't know anything then, so, like, it was exciting, yeah. you know? And it was, a, I think it was the Las Vegas... I don't remember what it was. Maybe somebody was having like a pre-party for like the Las Vegas Film Festival or something. Sure. But I remember that Robert De Niro, yeah, Chris Walken, and uh, Robert Duvall were there, and Sean Penn. Wow. So you're talking like, gee, that's like that's close to a Mount Rushmore for me. It's Pretty not. High, it's uh, not. But it's it's in the neighborhood. Like if you're yeah. chiseling away, you, they're all in the conversation. Absolutely. So it's like there's Duvall, you know, the tender mercies. Yeah. Like they're they're all there. Sure. And Penn, and. I got to talk to Sean Penn through some confluence of one group bumping into another. I was just, I just moved here. Like, yeah. I was just like, holy shit. And Sean Penn and I were in, ended up standing next to each other in a conversation. And he made a movie called The Indian Runner, yep. which was based on a Springsteen song. And Springsteen's my all time favorite anything, really. Yeah. And um, we just started talking about The Indian Runner. And he asked me if I was to make a. Uh, a movie from a Springsteen song what I would make and I started talking to Sean Penn and I'm yeah. like I cannot find that was my moment that was your moment yeah and maybe the last one actually <laughs> except for musicians musicians sure. it happens all the time you said and you met Springsteen in 07 that's a huge that was the deal. biggest one for me Halloween night 2007 it's, it's, Bruce yeah. that's the moment yes that's the moment because you know what that was the moment because I met him and then right at that time Gav called me at the same around the same time to start talking about Warrior I yeah. just met Gavin so yeah I guess I would look back and that's uh this fall will be 10 years. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. 
But yeah, let's go back to. So I'm sitting at the library oh, alehouse yeah. one day. Yeah, so it's this bar I was working at. And guys, if you don't know this about me, uh, it's funny. I was I was more afraid to talk about that sort of stuff for the longest time, probably while I was in it. And now that I'm sort of out of it, it looking back on it is a little more fun for me. I think it's good for people, like you were saying. It's, you know, why do you ask everybody what their stories are out here? Like, it's inspirational that people, like, you know, have these dreams and flood out to California, which has always been yeah. the place where everybody, we've always come west, you know, as people, as yeah. Americans, we've always come west and there's nowhere else to go but here. And it's the it's the epicenter of the global entertainment industry. It's the hardest place in the world to make it. Yeah, so it's impossible people need those stories. So like, yeah, people need to know that you are like bartending yeah. and people are grinding it out because you're supposed to grind it out out here. You're not supposed to come out here and just have everything handed to you. Yeah, I came out here in 09 um, and I was going to be a musician. I had an album out. I was getting ready to tour whole thing I was modeling playing music all this stuff Twilight was big at the time and I was super pale uh, from Seattle everybody used to call me Edward it was like a joke and so I was working at this bar as bartending you came in can, and can your can your guy out there put up a photograph yeah um, I don't know he probably doesn't have any oh other that's really too bad I, somebody I look, send in a photograph of Ben's Ben's <laughs> uh, music uh, how pictures? would you describe your look uh, it's pretty similar I was a little more pale I didn't wear a suit and I wore these silly leather boots all the time okay that was pretty much the extent of it I had a guitar with me a lot more uh, but it wasn't that different now there are some old pictures that you die laughing where my hair is like down to my shoulders that's what I'm looking for yeah, yeah I'll show you those okay I'd yeah. appreciate that greatly but I remember I was bartending and uh, the song it wasn't actually about today it was, no, it was uh, Vanderlei that's what was on yeah and um, I was singing along with it and I love that song it's probably in my top four or five national songs it's gotta be really high but I was singing along with it you were sitting at the bar and you were also singing along with it you were kind of singing to yourself I just remember walking up and that you were sitting next to a guy and I mentioned something. I was like, oh, do you like this band? And the guy next to you was like, yeah, I'm a big fan of this band. And you were like, yeah, I do. I do, actually. Uh, the singer's a friend of mine. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Matt, he lives in the neighborhood I've heard. I, he was friends with my old bosses. I've never met him before. And you're like, yeah, he's one of my best friends, actually. And I was like, wow. it's Well, it's funny you say that because I love this movie. It's this MMA movie. It's like fighting. Anyway, it's one of my favorites. And I found out about this band from the movie Warrior. And you yep. look at me. By the way, your voice right now is not what your voice was. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let me let me let me correct my handsome suited friend here. Yeah. He was very fired up. Yeah. Like the national was on and he was singing and I was just yeah. reading the paper, sitting at the bar trying to mind my own business yeah. and I was mumbling. And he's like <laughs> and he launched, Oh, I love this band, you know, I just fell out. I'm like, Yeah, no, they're a great band. It took me a long time before I tell you a new Matt. Yeah. I was like, No, no, they're a great band, you know. Yeah. And uh, you just kept, you know, you're like, yeah, you know, blah, blah. And you just kept going about how great yeah. the band was. I'm like, no, nah, uh, dude, the Nationals, they're the National. They're, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more, you know. And then uh, you're like, you know, I didn't even know this band yeah. until I saw that my favorite movie, like, my, I've seen it 40 times, my favorite <laughs> movie of all time. And I'm sitting there, I go, uh-oh, like, oh, this just went sideways. Like, yeah. I hope he doesn't say that. Because I didn't, like, obviously... Well, first of all, I'm just in there. I just want to eat lunch. Yeah, And right. secondly, I mean, my you don't want to be that mind. guy, like... <laughs> The worst guy in Hollywood is the guy who's like, let me tell you what I did. So I'm like, oh, well, I mean, it's cool. But I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. But then you kept, and by the way, not kept going like an asshole or like a right. dork or anything. You, you were just, you're passionate part. Like when you love things, you love them. I, that's my favorite thing about you. Like you're yeah. really passionate and you're um, very unabashed in your love for sure. the things that, you know, give your life meaning and that really you spark to, which yeah. is great. You know, like I'm a fan of things too. Like I'm yeah, a right. big fan of things. So you gotta love what you love. Yeah, I bruised my whole life. Still yeah. to this day, I still dress like Springsteen. Like, yeah. to the, you know, 35 <laughs> years later, I'm still, you know, going to Springsteen shows. Yeah. Um, but you were really fired up. And then as you kept going, then I it occurred to me, I'm like, oh no, now we're almost past the point where now I'm, now I'm a bad, now I'm a dick. Yeah. If I don't say anything. Sure. If I was, I'm a dick if I do say anything. But then it went too far. And now I'm a dick if I don't say anything. So yeah. then I had to tell you. And then it was like, oh. This is what you said. You said, okay. um, yeah, you're going to hate me for saying this, but I wrote that movie. Well, and, nobody wants to say that. You just yeah. feel like a jackass, you know? But it's like, gee, am I going to let this guy, uh, yeah. I mean, this guy's I, gonna, and I was like, going. no way. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You were like, yeah, I wrote that. I, I wrote Warrior. And, I was like, you've no, you're just like. I was like, you're fucking with me. I was like, there's no yeah, I way. I knew that was never finishing that salad at that point. Yeah, that, that's a that's a that's a lost <laughs> cob to me right now. And you don't serve it anymore over there, so it's a shame. I kind of feel like you owe me a cob yeah. salad now that I actually <laughs> do the math. Yeah, you do owe me a cob salad. Yeah, so that was a good one. That was definitely. I don't think there has been a more like the universe is a crazy place story ever in my life than that. Be just because like. How is that possible? You'd come in, I'd seen you 12 times. I just never said a word to you. Yeah, I love that place. I mean, uh, yeah, it was such kismet. And then it turns out, was, that was bizarre because then, uh, you know, it turns out that Ben's a great guy and 
you know, and everybody else who works there, yeah. you know, including Andrew and uh, the crew who's in our fantasy football league. Yeah, right. Um, so that's how it started. So, like, yeah. I'm like, this guy's a good guy, you know? So then I knew how how stoked you were about the National. And, yeah. you know, Matt had some shows coming up, and that's we were doing right. a benefit out in Malibu for a friend of ours who was, uh, <laughs> yeah, that whose, was a- whose kids were had a terrible disease, and they played, and then you guys came, and then, like, met, met, met them and everything. Yeah. And then... Uh, you know, like, you want to be in our fantasy football league? I'm like, these guys are kind of cool. I like these guys. Like, they're younger, but they're like, like, they remind me of me when, like, you know, yeah. 20 years ago, like, they get really fired up about things <laughs> and they, like, talk a lot of shit and drink way too much. I'm like, yeah, this could be amusing. Yeah, it was so, good. Uh, yeah, so we ended up joining our fantasy football league and, you're, you know. Yeah, the friends, rest is uh, history. Yeah. So, so, all right, like, talking about the national, because you told me, I think, that the way you found out about that band, that song, is your cousin is a fan right my nephew everything it's i know nephew, about uh i have this uh incredibly gifted nephew zach who's a met an incredible musician and really gifted writer too and by the way that's stuff people say about their siblings except in his case it's actually true like, yeah right it's like he was playing with like 40 year olds in bands when he was eight years old yeah so, but he's kept me up to i love music but he's been my music guy since I don't know, man. For like fifteen years, how ten he, years. How does he get you now with digital and everything? Does he send you Spotify? It's it's it's, it's falling off now. Oh really? It's falling off now. I'm a, I'm a little bit on my own now. He's uh, gotcha. he's 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 living in Manhattan. With, you know, he's living in Brooklyn actually with his girlfriend and okay. working for a living, so he doesn't have time to send his uncle uh, yeah. mixtapes anymore. But uh, he used to send me. So starting out, yeah, he would send me mixed CDs. Sure. And then as we trot through the changing the music industry, yeah. but he would send me lists. So oh, I, so I'm always been a hugely yeah, uh, up on new music, and I love new music. So, what do you listen to right now? Whatever, I'm listening. My favorite band right now is the War on Drugs. Yeah, they've got. I only know a couple of their songs. Jason, our buddy, loves War on Drugs. The War on Drugs, the Lost in the Dream record is the best record of the last like. Is five that years. the one that's got red eyes? Yeah, that song's great. That's got such, but that's got that's such like a the, Springsteen. That's song. That's the fifth best song in the record. That's six. a Springsteen song. That's it, that's got some echoes of Bruce. Yeah, so. it's a beautiful album, and I, you should you should definitely pick it up. But yeah, he sent me everything. But he sent me on one of his tapes. Mix t- mixes he sent me was uh, about today by the National, but not the record version. So they've recorded at a, a, a Parisian radio station. Yeah. And uh, he sent it to me, and I was like, oh, "That might be the best song I've ever heard in my life." Like I like to be moved. Like yeah. I look for art to move me. So all yeah. the movies that I love and the music that I love and theater, novels, anything I take in. Yeah. I like to have my heart broken. Yeah. I look to be moved emotionally by, which Completely. is why I I don't. Like, you guys crack me up with, like, action sport, like, all the action yeah, movies yeah. and stuff. I don't give a shit because they're not character-driven, so I wouldn't care. Like, I know you saw Fast and Fast 8. Like, yeah. there's no scenario where I'm going to see Fast 8, right? Ah, uh, we're closer than you think, though, because we covered Warrior on our show. And no, that's... I know. I've seen your list. Yeah. You have, you're, I've seen your top 50 yeah. list. You know, it, it happens to have things like Tommy Boy right next to Godfather 2 <laughs> and uh, Eternal Sunshine is right next to, what was the, it? The Rock. The Rock, right. So that's 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 Ben in a nutshell right there. Sure, yeah. But no, he... he, sh- he uh, he introduced me to that song, and I was like, holy shit. I can't believe how good this song is. Even even back then, I'm like, this song would be incredible in a movie. So I ended up playing that song, um, driving up to Gavin. O- Gavin used to live in Malibu. Yeah. Dr- Gavin O'Connor directed Warrior, and uh, he used to live in Broad Beach. And we were driving up to his house one night to work on the script, and uh, it's like late at night, and, and he loves, he gets most of his music through me. Yeah. Um, Zach plays it for me. I play it for Gav, and I played about today for him. Yeah. And he looked over. I just never forget. He looked over at me, and he got. He just hits rewind. Yeah. Hits it again. Hits it again. Cause it's like it's fucking forever going eight up to his house. Eight minutes or something. Yeah. So he falls in love with that song. Yeah. And uh, that was it. I was like, we should put it at the end of the movie, like blah blah. And yeah. then we, that's how we met the band. So like the great thing about this business, yeah, is that you get to meet and work with artists. Like you're saying that in that. The weird bubble, like, I can't believe I'm here. And then you get to the next bubble, which is you're not just in a conversation with the person that you admired. Yeah. You're colleagues with them and working on a project. Yeah, right. That's an interesting place to get they're to. They're live doing a show at the Troubadour. We're about that. And they're looking at you and Gavin. They're shouting you guys out. It's the best use of our music ever yeah. in media. That was and a fun night. Big thanks to these guys. Like, that's what really happened. You're like, I can't believe that that's a real thing right now. It's funny, though, because, you know, it's like people in the movie business love musicians and athletes yeah athletes love people in the movie business and musicians yeah musicians love athletes and people <laughs> in the movie business it's like this wheel of like everybody wants to be in everybody else's thing it's cooler yeah you know so matt and all those guys think it's oh they love this stuff yeah i mean they really enjoy it to be yeah, honest so right. they, you know they like uh 
you know, yeah, actors sense. and people coming to their shows and stuff. Not in a in a uh, disgusting way, but in a way that's like it's cool. Like people who impact the culture, listen yeah, to your work of and course. stuff. But that was a big one. So uh, we approached them because you get to so you get to meet people. I get to meet people in my favorite bands. Yeah, right. right? So you, you know, the music supervisor gets in touch and then like yeah. send an email and they invited us to a show. And then we had them to uh, when we rough cut when we screened the movie for them in New York in the Brill Building. Yeah. In Times Square. They all came up. It was this is how long ago it was. It was game seven. Okay. Lakers Celtics. Twenty ten? Twenty ten. The one where the Celtics got blown out. They got blown out that game. No, it was super it was the one that was really tight. Kobe shot six for twenty four. It was it was a bad night and they pulled it out. That late. wasn't two thousand eight? I thought the two thousand ten was the one where they lost the Celtics got blown out pretty hard. Celtics I would think one one in two thousand eight. Possibly blown out in 2009 and close in 2010. Okay, yeah, I don't quite remember. So it's game seven, right? And I'm a huge, uh, yeah. until my new hero took over. And you can see the yeah, through line, Russell, Russell Westbrook, Westbrook taking Westbrook. over. for. But previous to Russell Westbrook, who we are going to talk about, yeah. um, was Kobe Bryant. You yeah. want to talk about geeking out about somebody? Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Is one of my favorite athletes of all time. He is my next to Brady is my favorite athlete of all time. I just Brady, like everything Brady. about him. I like his style, attitude. I like uh, guys who just leave it, everything on the court. Yeah, you know, and that's why I like Russ Westbrook, obviously. But Kobe was my guy in Game Seven. Yeah, right. They yeah. were in New York and like all our, you know. So we have a lot of guys back home who are huge sports fans. Right, we're all getting together, and then we find out Gavin set the screening for. I think eight o'clock uh, with the national and their significant others, right? So you have to go you to just... determine whether they're going to let us use the music. Cause you have to remember like they hear, you know, when we met them at the Wiltern. Yeah. I think the only reason they even met us was because of the, the song request was so specific. They were like, Oh, this guy knows what he's like. That's right. a weird, they were impressed that we didn't ask to pick one of their popular songs. Yeah. Um, but they heard MM like fighting movie and whatever. Like those yeah. guys are all yeah, theater yeah. geeks, art, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, arty yeah. guys. Like they're not sports cats at all. It's funny. Yeah. Most musicians aren't. But yeah. those guys, like, I don't even know if anybody in that band, yeah, had ever watched an MMA match. Probably not. I don't think so. Yeah, Matt's not like George St. Pierre. So we had a, you know, that was like not <laughs> yeah. a layup that they were going to let us do this because yeah. they have a brand to protect. So they didn't know if this movie was going to be any good. Right. They have no idea what to expect. So we so we have them up to the bro building and I'm like, fuck, this is my favorite band is here. But I'm missing game seven. <laughs> right? Not like I grew up in, in, in the East Coast and, and we played uh we just played team sports. Right. Around the clock all year long. You right. know, when it got cold we played street hockey. When it was warm we played wiffle ball, t- football, any it was always team sports. Yeah. So sports mean a lot. Like, I know a lot about sports. Yeah, it mean yeah, a lot yeah. to me, you know? So I'm one of the few people in the arts who's also can, like, totally yeah. do the other thing. I can go, I can go into the, to the sports It's like world. why you and I get along so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you get the crossover. It's yeah, great. Yeah. And it makes it easy. It's always been easy for me with, like, uh, any girlfriends and any kind of holiday Thanksgiving right. kind of scenarios. You can dump me with, uh, it doesn't matter where they live, deep south, Midwest, no problem. Yeah, the, the yeah. guys want to talk sports. We're going to have a great day. It's important, yeah. So game seven, you know what that means. It's Kobe. It's and this is probably deal. the last time that Kobe's going to go for a ring, right? Yep. And it was. And here comes the national. So, like, they're watching the movie. I have my phone under my leg, right, <sighs> trying to watch the ESPN, you know, that crappy yeah. game tracker. And it's close and low uh, scoring. And I'm ch- I am I know how long the movie is, so I'm, like, yeah. figuring in my head <laughs> when's it going to end and how long we're going to want to talk afterwards. And, like, yeah, I'm not even paying attention to the movie. Other than to gauge their reaction, but you couldn't really tell. Yeah, it's dark. So we opened the movie with uh, Start a War. Yeah. But we didn't tell them we were using that song. Oh, got it. They just thought we were using it about today. So the movie opens, and here's Start a War, and they're like, Also a great use, by the way. Great use. I agree. Yeah. And then we bookended it. And anyway, so long story short, it ends. They loved it. Yeah. And uh, we made it to a bar, uh, Zyra's Place in Times Square, with like eight minutes left. You know, I have to watch the fourth quarter. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect night. That was a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have, if yeah. you were going to rank, if you were going to rank national songs, I think from, from probably like the nostalgia uh, perspective, I would imagine about today is your number one. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of the same way for me, though. I have, I have like more and more been finding that when I've done this exercise, 
I think Hard to Find is my number one. Yeah, you really like that song. It's just for some reason, like, some songs really speak to you, and the more I've listened to it, the more that song has, like, I think it's that and about the day are, like, right there. The song like that makes is just a kind of song that it makes artists happy to hear. Artists always are happy when fans like uh, more uh, some of their so- uh, work that's less uh, yeah. mainstream or less uh Yeah, you know, I don't know what popular. it is about that song. Do you have, if you were going to do your five, do you know what they are or no? You don't think you can it change it? a lot depending on, like, you know, you wear out music. Yeah, right. You know, so it depends on how fresh something it is. But, like, sure. about today, like, I like the ones that usually, like, I like when they when they give it a little, when they add a little muscle, you know. So I like, sure. like, uh, you know, Blood Buzz Ohio yeah. and, like, uh, Terrible Love and, like, Apartment Story and, yeah. like, things Some that are... Things are a little, just a little more. Uh, There's some really good old muscle. tracks too, like off Alligator. Like what's uh, uh, in my mind, that's the best one. That's the one. I'd say just uh, yeah. um, oh. Abel. Abel. Yeah. Abel's okay. Fucking Abel. Phenomenal. Yeah. Abel is way up there because that's the one you can like. Abel can go on a workout yeah. list. It yep. can go on a running list. Yeah. Like Abel makes you want to punch somebody in the face, well, Abel's- and not a lot of martial songs. Martial songs usually make you want to punch yourself in the face. But that song makes you want to punch someone else. Because Mr. November is the one they always do at ev- the end of every show. Yeah. But Abel should be Mr. November because I, I like Abel a lot more. I request them to play Abel every time I see one of their shows. Yeah, Abel's phenomenal. Abel's the one I, I always want to see Abel. Yeah. It just is ma- like he goes. That's him at his wildest. There's also yeah. like the whole. In- I think Alligator's heavily underrated. Actually, that album's yeah, really good. It's great. got like seven classics. Um, Alligator's great. Yeah, my top five. I, it's hard for me right off the bat, but I would say that it almost is definitely. Hard to find that about today are like right next to each other. I feel like humiliation's really high for me. Yeah, you like some obscure. That's that's yeah, not on anybody's humiliation's list. Humiliation's a great song. I think maybe Star War. It's hard to, to really. Oh, and then and then probably Vanderlei. It's just how do you pick fives? So they're they just finished. Um, I had a great night. Here's a great night. Yeah. Two weeks ago, Matt sent me the um, uh, you know SoundCloud right. uh, thing with the, all their new. So they're working on a new, they're very deep, and they're almost done. On the new album, yeah. With their new album. And he sent me, uh, he'll usually send me the, the tracks and stuff. Uh, yeah. Before. I like to chime in. Yeah. You know, yeah and I'm very yeah. close <laughs> friends with uh, Matt's wife, Corinne, who's uh, brilliant. She's a poet and, yeah. and uh, contributes a lot to the band, lyrically and, and otherwise. And so she's, 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 the, she's the, the, the silent member of the member national. Of the yeah, she's amazing, yeah. and they have an incredible relationship. Um, what were we just talking about? Just blank first. Oh yeah, favorite songs, and then they're working on the new record. You just oh yeah. yeah, so uh, so those guys, you know, we like to talk. You know, Matt, Matt will send me the re- the yeah. songs, and Corinne and I will like uh, talk about like. I come at it from a different perspective than they do, so um, I'll listen to all the songs and yeah, yeah. type up my notes, you know, and send oh, them sure. in. You, you get know, them, like it's written. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's an honor, you know. So I like sat out back, you know, um, the fire pit in my backyard. Yeah, yeah. So. I, Cranked up the fire pit and smoked a fat joint and put on the new record and put on my headphones yeah. and listened to the new record like four times. And that was that's a great night, too. That's a great night, yeah. I mean, how many people get to say, like, oh, yeah, my favorite band sends me the track for the record? Time. I know I it's a to total just... honor. It's like, yeah. uh, it's never lost on you yeah. when, uh, when you're doing it, but then you get to, you know, you get to a point eventually, right? You grow up and get if you just, you know, eventually you get good enough at what you do where. People start becoming your peers. Sure. You know? And they like what you do. You know? And they like can't believe that you can write a novel in the same way that you can't believe that they can play in front of you know. So it's a nice kind of reciprocal um yeah. relationship after a while. So before we end, I there's a couple things I want to know. One yeah. of them, and I'm gonna get there just to tap this off, is about basketball. But really quickly before that, because we're still on this. Uh, Gavin teased kind of recently, eh, probably six months ago in an interview that you guys were talking about maybe doing a sequel to Warrior. This is a thing that's out there yeah. a little bit. So if that's a thing that's happening, he did I, he did say that. So since he said it, I, yeah. I will I will I will yeah I'll confirm that. You'll like corroborate uh, the evidence. Yeah, I can't tell you too much about it, but uh, we are talking about it right now. Gavin and I are working on uh, uh, pretty much broken the plot of the new movie, and um, and National? Tommy and Joel are involved. Would the national be involved? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think so. Oh, really? No, it's gonna be a totally different kind of movie. I think. Um, it's going to be a lot different. Yeah. But uh, it's going to be really electric, and we have Tommy and Joel, and I don't know, pr- maybe. Yeah. You know, Let's maybe. see how it goes. See yeah. how it goes. But if, if they were, I think it would be something original. 
What about uh, maybe so? Maybe they would write an original. I would do original song, but not something that they. But not something for you. No. Didn't write for it. That'd be awesome. Uh, what about Sun Dogs? That's another film that you worked on, isn't it? Oh yeah, I don't want to talk about that. One. Oh really? Disaster. You don't even want to get into it. Okay, Disaster. fair enough. I've been watching Supergirl, so I, your girl. Oh, she's the best though, Melissa yeah. Benoist, man. I'll tell you what. Don't ever meet Melissa Benoist. It's because my best advice to you. It'll ruin your relationship. Roxy's great. I love her. <laughs> she's, she's the best. But you don't want to meet Melissa Benoist because she's oh, okay. just uh, one of those girls. She's with the dude from the, store, from the show now. She's yes. Yeah. I just I just uh, found out about that, and uh, yeah. you know, a little bit of my a little bit of my heart broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's great. Like you know, those girls who are just like. That you just like to have them around. Like she's a lovely sure. human being, and sure. she's full of, uh, she's beautiful and uh, funny, and uh, playful, and just a wonderful person. So we had a really great time uh, yeah. making that movie, so that was which turned into a disaster. But uh, yes, yeah, she that was part great. of it was good. Yeah, though. Supergirl, yeah, yeah. Michelle, oh, Melissa's great. That's awesome. All right, so last thing that we're gonna cap yeah. off here because we just got to talk sports a little bit. Sure. This is gonna air in May, so this will already be. We're, we'll be well into the NBA playoffs. But what's interesting is. Yeah. They're for some reason doing the awards thing after the finals this year. Oh, they are? Yeah, we're not going to find out who's the MVP till after the finals, which is weird. Why? I don't know. So you have a strong... More of this MVP bullshit. Point here, yeah. I just want to know because the whole conversation all year, you got to tell me who's your MVP and who's winning the finals. That's the two questions I have for Anthony Dimbakis. I'm, I'm disgusted. I was, I was like to say in closing <laughs> that I am disgusted <laughs> by the... Uh, I'm disgusted by the... I'm offended by the question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm offended for Russell Westbrook that there's this apparently scintillating debate out there, which like yeah. apparently Bill Simmons, what did you say this yeah, morning? Yeah, he voted for Harden this morning. And he said it was the, be- the closest MVP race of all time? Yeah, close to it. Yeah. Bill Simmons should go back to writing <laughs> writing, and get his mediocre everything off of television. Okay. Okay. He was great when he worked for ESPN and was a writer, sure. but all the writers now want to be on TV. Right. But these guys aren't aren't equipped for television. Sure. They don't, they didn't come up in TV. So you have all these like sports writers who have bad, like they don't have any style, they don't yeah. have commanding voices. For the record, I think that his statement was in a written piece. I think he wrote this. Did he finally write something again? I think he wrote this. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go too bad on yeah. Simmons, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm a fan of Simmons. I got his Look, back. I, I, got I his love back. Simmons from the East, East Coast Red Sox fan yeah. who moved to LA and fell in love with it. I, I would be a massive hypocrite to yeah. uh, say anything about Bill. I'm, I am Bill Simmons. Yeah, you but, are. Uh, You're the guy. You know, really. But. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I, Bill was, uh, I liked it. I like when he wrote. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's great his f- Friday mailbags were great. And, yeah. Uh, but he's been, he's become really successful. But anyways, Bill Simmons seems to think that. Uh, <laughs> You're just offended. He just seems to think, <laughs> apparently, and a lot of people seem to think that let's, let's all get around and debate who the MVP of the, of the NBA is. Right. Which, I don't, why are we, why are we debating that? So tell I me, mean, what's your case? Aside Russell from the tr- <laughs> Westbrook has done the impossible. That's my case. 43 triple doubles. Okay, 42 triple doubles. Forget the fact that it hadn't been done since 1961-62. Sure. Right? Oscar Robertson, for the record, yeah. played 10.2 minutes longer than Russell Westbrook. 44.4 okay. minutes a game for yeah. Oscar Robertson. 34.2 minutes a game for Russell Westbrook. And Oscar Robertson, his team in that era in the NBA, Average 25 more possessions per game yeah. than current teams in the NBA do. Yep. That is 25 more opportunities and 10 minutes added to it yeah. for rebounds, assists, and all that stuff. It's crazy. Okay. So he has eclipsed anything that Oscar Roberts had done. So what's the big gripe now? Well, anybody could do this. Really? You have the temerity to say that in the car. <laughs> Don't you think LeBron James, I think if he wanted LeBron to? LeBron James could do it on a nightly basis. LeBron if he to. James <laughs> does not have the <laughs> intestinal fortitude. To go out there every night, yeah, and play at max volume like Russ Westbrook does. <laughs> that that's not to slag off LeBron, who I can't stand, by the way. But yeah. I will have to give sure. him his due. Okay, no question. And I can't stand LeBron James. It, Hollywood writer says LeBron. Yeah, <laughs> it pains me to like. I hate. I really. I do, I do not like LeBron James. Um, but so it goes. But LeBron James, if you put him on this sure. version of the Thunder, he would. You put him on a trash team. Yeah. He is throwing every one of those players under the bus. He's bitching to the GM. I need more help. Right. He is. He would never go out there and lay it on the court 82 nights in a row like Russell Westbrook did. He would. Uh, I'm not saying he doesn't have the physical capabilities, but he doesn't have the heart right. to do what Ru- Westbrook did. And none of these motherfuckers. There's your last swear, your podcast. <laughs> none of these motherfuckers play the game 
with the passion and abandon and integrity that yeah. Russell Westbrook plays basketball. So, no. Answer is no. No one could do what he did this year, and it's offensive that anybody would vote James Harden. James Harden doesn't play half the game. That's okay? He doesn't play half the game. And his stats uh, are not as good as Westbrook's, <laughs> but we got to talk about James Harden? Kawhi Leonard? Stop. Yeah. Just, just Everybody stop. All right. Russell Westbrook had one of the greatest <laughs> sporting seasons <laughs> in your lifetime. Probably, I mean, this might be the greatest of my whole lifetime. And honestly. it's a disgrace that no one's giving him more props. Yeah, I look. I, I, if I was voting today, I would vote for Westbrook, Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I would vote. I and I had Westbrook on my fantasy team this year, and I swear by the man. So I'm, I'm with you. I just think it's an interesting conversation. It's Kobe come back to life for me. It is it's and, so beautiful, and they're friends. So what I want to know is this: Yes, who's going to win the finals this year? This is going to probably come out uh, a few weeks before the finals, so we'll see how right you are. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh... I guess I'm going to pick the chalk here. I'm going to pick the Warriors. Golden State. I would say the same thing. It's a, it's too hard to pick anyone else. It's not it's not realistic with with uh, with the Cavs going 23 and 23 in their final 46. It's just not realistic. You can forget the Cavs. Yeah. I would forget the Eastern Conference entirely. Yeah. Oh my God, that was a terrible thing that happened. You hear about Isaiah Thomas? It's yeah, just, it was so terrible. sad. Um, nobody from the East can play with anybody in the West, and Cleveland is a mess. And I'm sure they'll pull it together a little bit for the playoffs, but yeah. the hunger's gone. They got their, they got the rank, like they did their job. Like he went there, he made it happen. Got to yeah. give him credit for that. But no way. So now I think it just becomes a, cl- a question of does something crazy happen in the West? And you know the Spurs are always live. Yeah, they're always live. I think it'd be amazing. Warriors. I would love to Warriors see Warriors easy. Warriors, I think in a, uh, Warriors. I would, I would easy. love to see the one seed. I would love to see Boston versus Golden State. I think that'd be a great series. I especially. I, I really like that Celtics team. I don't think they're as good as the Warriors by a mile, but I really like that Celtics team. I think it'd be a lot of fun to see. I'd rather see that than the. Uh, I want. I don't want to see the Cleveland rematch. I think that ends in five games. The Cleveland rematch. I think so. And I think that this idea that Kevin Durant might make the Warriors worse is the stupidest thing I've ever. Yeah, he's one of the five best players in the league. I mean, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, absurd. All right, guys, that's that's gonna do it. We're out of time. I want to just keep talking sports. We'll have to do it next yeah, we'll time. Go, obviously, we'll yeah. keep we'll go outside. And keep talking sports. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, guys. This has been uh, the Nerds and Suits show, the Closet Nerd. Follow Nerds and Suits on all social media at Nerds and Suits. Anthony is a creature of the night with social. He stays completely off ah, of it, so no, you can't no. find him anywhere. Definitely not. No, uh, that's not for me. Yeah, but you know, you've got a book coming out on July 11th, so you know, buy that and send yeah, him I'm a, sure fan a lot letter. of fiction. For there's a lot of fiction readers reading. Hey, uh, I mean, listening, but uh, yeah. I'm if somebody sent that. you a letter about your book, somebody who was a fan of movies, yeah. I'll bet you you'd get back to him. I'll bet you you'd at least acknowledge it. Oh, no question. It's that rare. means way more to me than, than yeah. this does. So, yeah, no question. Absolutely. Than this does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Not pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so at Nerds and Suits, guys, find me at Ben Bateman Media, anywhere, Twitter, Instagram, all those things. And we have plenty of other awesome shows on Nerds and Suits for you to check out. And, of course, go to the Popcorn Talk Network where you can check out Action Movie Anatomy every single Wednesday with Andrew Guy. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one. Thanks for watching, guys. That was the long-lost episode of A Great Conversation, I guess originally titled The Closet Nerd. Anthony was great. I really hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did watching it back. I got to get back in the gym. Um, A big-time thank you to my Double Diamond members of the Nerd Network. All of you have been certified Double Diamond. A big-time thank you to AJ Lancaster, Nikki Therese, Pardis, Jessa Dawson, Philip Gustafson, The Prince That Wasn't Promised, and Brianne Chandler. I know a lot of you guys have call signs in the Action Army. I'll probably get a little more used to doing the whole uh, double diamond this and that and then all the big long titles. But for now, I just wanted to make sure you guys all heard your name. So a big time thank you to every one of you. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And do not forget to leave a comment below. Even if you're watching this, if the stream is ending right now on the premiere, leave a comment below literally as soon as it's done. It would mean everything to me. Hit that like button and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. And I will see you same time, same place next week. Nerds and Seuss. Have a good one.